Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Fawn Farm and today we're going to be talking about whether or not I recommend pharmacy as a career. Now before I start this video, I would just like to say everything in this video is my thoughts. Um, this is just what I currently think, you know, obviously do what is best for you. Um, do your own research, but I'm um, just kind of going off a little bit of of my own experience and you know the experiences of those people around me um, all right let's get started so the first question that I think is important to ask um, when you're thinking about whether or not to go into the field of pharmacy is what aspect of pharmacy are you interested in um, if you're even thinking about this, you probably know that with pharmacy, there are generally three main um, different careers. I would say I put them into buckets. Obviously, there are a bunch of, you know, other little aspects, but generally most pharmacists either end up in the retail setting, which is, you know, CVS, Walgreens, Safeway, Giant. There's also hospital pharmacy. So if you're a pharmacist that's working in the hospital, um, you're like a staff pharmacist or you're specialized in uh, some field. And the third bucket being the pharmaceutical industry, which is currently where I am working in. So with these three aspects of pharmacy, you want to consider what is necessary to get into these types of pharmacy. Okay, so those are the three general buckets of pharmacy. So you have the retail pharmacy, you have the hospital pharmacist, and then you have pharmacists that work in pharmaceutical industry. Again, there are other aspects of pharmacy. You know, there are pharmacists that work for insurance companies. There are consultant pharmacies, pharmacists that work in um, specialized pharmacy settings or compounding pharmacies, independent pharmacies, which is not necessarily retail, um, slower paced, uh, things like that. So you definitely want to consider that. But I'm going to focus mainly on the three big three big buckets. So you're a pharmacist that's working in either in retail, the hospital, or pharmaceutical industry. Some of the things that you want to take into consideration when you're looking at these aspects of pharmacy and what you would like to end up in is work-life balance. Okay, work-life balance is huge. Once you graduate pharmacy school, nobody wants to be living the life that you were living while you were in school, right? Like when you were in school, your life was about school majority of the time. So when you come out of school, it's important to look at which aspect of pharmacy would enable you to build or live the best life that you would like to live, right? While while being able to work and make money, um, but also have a life. So with that being said, it's easiest to get into retail pharmacy straight out of pharmacy school. Okay, so with work-life balance with, with these three, I'll speak very generally here. Um, retail pharmacy, generally offers the uh, least amount of work-life balance. It's a very high-stress environment. If you've been to CVS, you probably know. Um, of course, there are some retail pharmacies that are not as stressful. Um, there are retail pharmacies that are in that are in remote locations. You know, they don't have stressful population. So there are less stressful aspects of retail pharmacy that I've seen firsthand. You know, even places like Costco or um, Sam's Club, generally the pharmacy, I worked at Sam's Club and it really wasn't as busy. But there's an another aspect of stress that works in that that comes with working in these kind of pharmacies so let's start with places like cvs cvs and walgreens and you know high traffic areas tend to be very stressful just because you have patients coming in and out just keep in mind that generally pharmacists get one lunch break and it's a 30 minute break you're not allowed to leave the pharmacy during your lunch break um, because again the pharmacy cannot necessarily close um, and no one can operate a pharmacy without a pharmacist being there. There's usually one pharmacist on staff. So, you know, in the event of you having to eat or anything like that, you have to do it in the pharmacy. You're not allowed to leave. Your techs cannot be there by themselves. You're working on your feet. You're not allowed to sit down. I mean, there's a stool there for, you know, maybe you can take like a quick sit down, rest and eat kind of break but generally while working you're not allowed to sit down so if you're working you know let's say a 12-hour shift you are working a 12-hour shift 
majority of it will be by yourself and you're allowed one 30 minute break as you guys know cvs and walgreens close at specific times during the day and it's it's only one time 1 30 to 2 i believe um and that's fairly recent i would say that that's that happened within the last like within the last five three to five years for sure because um i remember when i started pharmacy school there were no breaks okay pharmacists were working throughout so just keep in mind it's not the best environment for work-life balance on top of that you have patients that come in of course because it's a retail setting you're dealing with very uh stressful patients right you're you're dealing with patients that want their medications patients that are in pain patients you know people just general people that are dealing with whatever they're dealing with and they come into the pharmacy and they're looking at the pharmacist for why their prescription is not here on time why their medication is not ready, why the pharmacy is out of stock. So you're already in an environment where you're dealing with people that need medication, that need something. So these are people that are already, you know, not very happy. And then on top of that, you have, you know, if, if there are any shortages or anything that happens to affect them getting their prescription on time, the blame is put on the pharmacist, whereas pharmacists have little to no control over things like you know stock and their medication and the doctor sending them their prescription etc so there are a lot of different components it's just a very high stress environment um there are also a lot of things that you learn in pharmacy school that you don't necessarily use in the retail setting right so we learn so much about counseling and you know diagnosing patients and you know asking all these questions if a patient comes in with you know for an over-the-counter recommendation but at the end of the day you don't have that time and people don't really know that you have that skill set okay so you're you you end up using very limited um amount of knowledge in terms of um, what you're actually doing in your day to day, you spend a lot of time just verifying orders, right? You don't really get to get to use the breadth of the knowledge that you learn in pharmacy school. So over time that you, you lose that. Um, and it's kind of discouraging because pharmacy school is great. It's, you know, it's you learn so much for you not to really use it. It's not the best. Um, yeah, it's not the best. Um, another aspect is, of course, you have the stress of it. Um, like like I said, there are um, pharmacies like Safeway or Costco and Sam's Club that are not as high traffic. But then again, with those pharmacies, you have the pressure of meeting numbers, meeting quotas. So when I worked at Sam's Club, the population that I worked in the area that I worked at had a lot of elderly people people that would come in so this was a you know more elderly population one of the pressures that i had was to get or let's say the store had the store had a burden of like fulfilling two shots a day whether that was flu shot pneumonia shot um any shot my pharmacist would have me go out and basically like solicit you know, share with people that I would be staying at the door, letting them know we're offering shots or just, you know, finding random people within the store. And it wasn't fun. I didn't like doing that. Um, but it's also the fact that we needed to meet those numbers. You have pressure. I had pressure coming from my pharmacist. My pharmacist had pressure coming from the district manager. District manager had pressure, you know, so it's just like, you have that pressure of just meeting up with numbers. It's really a lot about numbers. Um, so that that wasn't the best environment to work in. Even though the pharmacy itself was very calm, we didn't have like people that, you know, were super stressed. These are people that were coming to probably buy food and they're like, oh, let me pick up my medication. So if something wasn't ready in time, they would understand because, you know, they would just continue shopping. So that's retail pharmacy. Um, with hospital pharmacy, I'm not too familiar with hospital pharmacy, but one thing that is kind of known within pharmacy is that pharmacists are not very much respected, especially in the hospital setting. They're not very respected by doctors. So a pharmacy degree is a doctorate degree, but believe it or not, a lot of people don't know that. That's because pharmacy used to be a bachelor's degree. So you still have some pharmacists practicing today that are using their bachelor's degree yes it's a doctor degree it's a doctorate program like medical school you go you go to school for four years um 
and you come out as a doctor of pharmacy. But a lot of people don't recognize that and a lot of people don't respect that. So oftentimes it becomes even hard for pharmacists to be able to, to do their job in the hospital setting because you're basically having to prove yourself to to physicians and the people that you're working with. You know, a physician will send an order and if a pharmacist sees that there's something wrong with it, it's almost like what the physician say, says goes, even though the pharmacist is the last one to, you know, see that prescription and verify it. Um, so they have that burden, right? They have that, we, pharmacists have that burden of, of, of verification, but you're also kind of having to prove yourself to these physicians that, you know, obviously are the ones diagnosing. That's the other thing. Pharmacists don't diagnose. We learn about conditions and learn about, you know, what can lead, what medication are, what medications are necessary for certain conditions. And in order to know that you kind of have to know how to diagnose, right? Like how can I prescribe you a medication without knowing your condition, right? For me to know your condition, I have to look at all these different aspects. I have to ask you questions. And that's, so that's an aspect of making a diagnosis, right? So even when we're verifying med medications, we're looking at what are what are the symptoms and signs that you have for this for you for for this condition for us to be able to to verify this. And so we do learn an aspect of diagnosis, but we don't diagnose. Um, and so that's the other thing is you will constantly be probably having to prove to a physician that you know what you're talking about um, and, you know, your knowledge is not simply limited to just checking the box, right? Like for you to know this medication, you have to know what it's for, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's an aspect of hospital pharmacy. Now, hospital pharmacy, of course, it's in a hospital. So if you like the hospital setting, then, you know, I would look further into that. Um, it comes with its own stress. I mean, it is what it is. The third aspect of pharmacy, which is the pharmaceutical industry, is where I work in. I think that that offers the most work-life balance. Pharmaceutical company; these are pharmaceutical companies, likely that are making medications. At least that's the sector that I work in. For some of the jobs in the pharmaceutical industry, you're able to work remotely. So my job is based in an office setting. You know, I'm not seeing patients. I'm not dealing with healthcare professionals in a hospital setting or anything like that. So I have the ability to work from home, which I do some days. There are positions that are fully remote. Uh, so you do have more work-life balance. And that's the nature of the job. Again, you're not dealing with patients firsthand. You're not dealing with them directly. So I think that plays into, you know, people just living putting their careers, building their careers around their lives. So uh, those are those are those are very important aspects to consider when looking at pharmacy as a career, right? Um, now, while you're looking at that, an important consideration is how to get into these positions. Like I said, it's easiest to get a retail position outside of pharmacy school, but for something like working in the hospital and working in the pharmaceutical industry is becoming more and more competitive, meaning that a pharmacy degree is not always enough. So with working in a hospital setting, majority of pharmacy students have to do residency, uh, which, you know, when you go to medical school, you kind of do residency to specialize. It's a similar concept. You go to pharmacy school for four years and then you do residency for either an additional one or two years to specialize in a specific aspect of pharmacy. You can even do residency to work in the community setting. So there are community residency programs. Um, so that's another aspect to take into consideration is that you would likely have to do residency to work in a hospital. For, for a pharmaceutical industry, you would most likely have to do a fellowship. Now, am I saying you cannot get a fellowship without doing that? No, not at all. But it would he be heavily dependent upon your connections, the people that you know, um, and just how much work you were putting in during pharmacy school. So that's something to keep in mind is that you'd likely have to go to school for you know, an additional one or two years to be able to get these more lucrative positions that have more work-life balance, etc. 
With that being said, my recommendation as far as whether or not to pursue pharmacy would heavily depend on which one of these areas you see yourself going into and whether or not you're willing to put in the extra time and effort, right? Are you willing to take a pay cut for one to two years as a fellow or resident to be able to get experience in these additional areas so that you can then, you know, get a job? Are you willing to incur XYZ amount of debt to be a pharmacist? So I would definitely look at where you want to be four years from now and, you know, try to picture your life. Where do you see yourself? If you know that you don't want to do retail, for sure, like you're 100% sure you don't want to do retail, then you have to at least be open to the idea of doing a residency program or a fellowship program to get into these other aspects of pharmacy. Um, I did a fellowship, but I also did a master's degree because I knew that it was competitive. So my pharmacy degree was a dual degree, a pharmacy and a master's degree in regulatory science. Um, and after that, I still did a fellowship um, in clinical development to be able to, you know, get a, a, a job in the pharmaceutical industry. So if you're not willing to go to school for an extra one to two years to get that experience, then I wouldn't recommend pharmacy, um, especially if you know that you don't want to do retail. Now, if you're open to working in retail and you think that you can do that and you're willing to do that, the reality is most people do retail for a year or two and then realize that they can't handle the stress. And then what do you really fall back on? It's it's hard to move from retail into other settings because you've spent a year or two basically not using your knowledge from pharmacy school. You've been in the retail setting, so it's very hard to pivot your career at that point and work in these other sectors from retail. It's not impossible, but it's definitely hard. So you want to keep that into consideration. If you are sure that you are okay with retail, then I would recommend pharmacy. I think that at, at best, pharmacy school, it will prepare you to be able to get a job in the retail setting. And if that's enough for you, then I would go for it. But if that's not enough for you and you're not willing to do additional training or school, I would look deeper. I would think really hard. I would speak to a bunch of people and reconsider your decision to go to pharmacy school. That's just my two cents. Now, if you are willing to do an additional one to two years of pharmacy school to get into these more lucrative positions, whether in the hospital or in the pharmaceutical industry, then, you know, I would look into it and I would make sure that you do all the work that's necessary during pharmacy school to get the experiences that are necessary to be able to land these jobs, just so that you don't waste your time. I would argue that you need to be very specific and do the research ahead of time and be very specific with what you wanna do. It's very important. You don't wanna waste your time or your money um, just for you to find out that you know it's not what you thought it was. So that's kind of my two cents. Uh, look deeper, look further, figure out whether you wanna do retail and if you're fine with that, then go for it. But if not, um, think about whether you're willing to do additional schooling and if you're not, then I wouldn't do pharmacy. That's my general recommendation. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible to do these career paths without additional schooling. It's just harder, okay? And um, if you're weighing the cost versus the reward um, or the likelihood, then um, it may not be worth it. You may end up with 200K in debt with no job or, you know, it may be. So it's really up to you. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, do your research. Um, and figure out what's best for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, if there's anything you want me to discuss about pharmacy as a whole, please uh, don't hesitate to comment, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.